Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to go over a proof that will show that any two cyclic groups of the same order are isomorphic. So in a previous video, I mentioned that the groups Z and the set containing all powers of two are isomorphic cyclic groups. And it turns out that every infinite cyclic group, all of those are going to be isomorphic to the integers. And so now we're going to prove that any two cyclic groups of the same order are isomorphic. So this is going to deal with both the finite case and the infinite case. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the finite case. So let's start by letting n be a positive integer. And let's let the set the group generated by x and the group generated by y be cyclic groups both of order n. So we now need to show that they're isomorphic. So we need to construct an isomorphism. So our isomorphism is going to be f going from the group generated by x to the group generated by y by sending f of x to the k to y to the k. So that's just what our map is going to be. And we now have to show that this is an isomorphism. But first, we have to show, is this even a well-defined map? So let's suppose that x to the r is x to the s. Now, the reason for this is, for example, let's say that n is 7 then x to the 3 and x to the 10, those are the same element. So they both uh, are the same element in the group, and so we have to show that they map to the same thing in the group generated by y, because otherwise this is not going to be a well-defined map. So if x to the r equals x to the s, then that means that x to the r minus s is just 1. So r minus s is some multiple of n. And that means that we can rewrite r as n times t plus s. So let's look at f of x to the r. f of x to the r, that is y to the r, which is y to the nt plus s, which is y to the n to the t times y to the s. Well, y to the n is just 1. So that means we have just 1 to the t times y to the s, which is just y to the s. And y to the s is f of x to the s. So that means that f is well defined. That means that all we now need to do is now still show that this is an isomorphism. So we're going to start by showing that f is a homomorphism, because remember, an isomorphism is a bijective homomorphism. So here we go. Let's get started. So let's look at what f of x to the a, x to the b is. We need to show that this is a homomorphism, so it behaves nicely with this. Well, x to the a times x to the b, that's x to the a plus b. So we have f of x to the a plus b. And that just becomes y to the a plus b, according to our rule for the homomorphism, or the rule for our uh, function that we will show as a homomorphism. Well, y to the a plus b is y to the a times y to the b, which is f of x to the a times f of x to the b, which is exactly what we needed to show to show that f is a homomorphism. So now we need to show that f is bijective. Okay? So since every element of y to the k is clearly the image of x to the k, that means that f is surjective. We are able to very easily show what do I map to get y to the k? Well, I start with x to the k. So it's surjective. I hit everything. And since both of them have the same finite order, that means that every surjection is a bijection. So we have actually shown that f is an isomorphism. And so that means we are done with the finite cases. So now let's move on to the infinite case. Okay, let's let y be an infinite cyclic group. So we're going to define our function f from z to the group generated by y by f of k equals y to the k. So again, is this a well-defined map? Unlike the finite case, there's not ambiguity in the input of our map. We ha there we had x to the 3 equals x to the 10 because it was cyclic of order 7, for example. But here, different integers are always different. We don't have ambiguity in the input, so that means f is always going to be well defined. Okay, now we show that f is a homomorphism. So we start with f of a plus b. Well, that's y to the a plus b, which is y to the a times y to the b, which is f of a times f of b. Now, notice that this is addition here, whereas in the it's f of a plus b, whereas the output is f of a times f of b. This is still an, a homomorphism because the plus is our group operation in the integers and the multiplications are group operation in um, our group generated by y. So this is still a homomorphism even though it doesn't quite look like it. Okay, But that does mean that f is a homomorphism. And now we need to show that, again, this is a bijection. 
Now here, we clearly have y to the k is an L is the image of k, so f is surjective, but we can't just then say that, oh, that means it's a bijection, because that was only for the finite case. Here we have the infinite case, so let's prove it's injective. So if a is not b, then y to the a is not y to the b. That means that f is injective. Okay, that's all it needs. We just needed to show it was injective, so we now have it's bijective, so f is an isomorphism. So that means that every infinite cyclic group is isomorphic to z. Okay, since being isomorphic is a transitive property, that implies that all infinite cyclic groups are isomorphic, and we are done. So I hope you enjoyed this video where we proved that all groups, or all cyclic groups of the same order are isomorphic. And if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And if there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please, please leave that in the comment section down below. I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all of your math.